Yep. We'll take our first questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hello, Charles. How are you? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, first question. It's been a minute since we last saw you. Just how are you feeling going into this one after those couple months out of action? Uh, feeling great. I've been ready for the last six months. Um, I, you know, I fought those two fights pretty close together back to back. So, you know, just figuring since I got to fight a few times during COVID, they probably just wanted to catch up with everybody else. But I've been uh, ready for the last six months. I told the UFC I was ready to fight on short notice whenever. So basically, I've been in training camp for the last six months since my last win versus Kevin Aguilar. You've said that you feel like you have the edge everywhere over Derek. If it's so easy, what made you want to take this fight in particular, dude? <laughs> what made me want to take it? Uh, yeah. It's the fight yeah. the UFC offered me. It's the fight that I take. The UFC calls me and I answer. I've never turned down a fight with the UFC. I've been offered you know, multiple fights on short notice over the years. My first UFC fight, uh, five days notice against Dennis Seaver. Um, you know, I was 9-0 with nine first round finishes coming into the UFC. I took my first UFC fight on five days notice in Stockholm, Sweden, against the number nine guy in the world, Dennis Seaver. So, um, to, you know, that, that's type, that's who I am. You know, I, uh, I'm ready at all times. I'm training all the time, and I'm ready to go. And this is the name they sent over. So this, the, this, is, this is who I got. How do you see yourself getting the job done on Saturday? Uh, I think there's, there's many ways I could win. It, it's really on Derek. It's, uh, how, it's where he wants to try to take the fight. If he wants to try to stand in front of me, you know, I know he got a new coach. Uh, James Krause. So, you know, I know he's a striking coach. So if he wants to try to stand up with me and eat some shots and he's going to get knocked out. And then if he wants to try to go into the grappling exchanges, you know, which is my silver bullet where I'm best at, then he's going to get choked out. So those are those are the two things that you're going to see happen. Hey, thank you, Charles, and good luck. Yep. We'll take our next set of questions from Jay Anderson. Your line is open. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, Charles, I just want to build on uh, that last uh, question a little bit. I mean, you've said there's levels to this, and uh, he's going to find that out. I don't want you to give anything away. I know fighters are loath to give up their game plans, but have you seen any flaws in Derek's game that you've identified that you think you can capitalize on? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I definitely respect Derek as a fighter. He's a, he's a veteran. He's been there over 40 fights, so, you know, um, but there's no doubt that he's very uncomfortable in, in the octagon. That's why he fights the way he does, so... You know, his, you know, I know he throw, he goes very aggressive in the beginning. He comes out swinging really hard and he wants to get the finish soon. So, I mean, I've never been finished, you know, in my career. And, um, you know, I think yeah, I've never been submitted in my career. So I don't, I don't see Derek Ryan being the first one to do it. So, I mean, obviously he's a tough kid. And there's a reason he's in there with me because he's an elite level fighter. But um, he, like I said, like I said in the other interview, there's levels to it. So he's going to find out come Saturday night. And I believe you're uh, training out in Florida still, but as a Massachusetts native, what's it like to see the growth of uh, New England MMA over the last couple of years? Because it seems like it's a real hot spot now. Yeah, it's pretty special. I definitely, you know, I go up in, I go up in Boston, New England off camp, and I get to go work with Rob Font and uh, Mickey Ward. You know, uh, Mickey Ward's one of the guys that I get to work with in Boston. You know, all, everyone knows Mickey Ward is a legend of a boxer boxing coach and uh you know of a person he's not just a boxing coach to me but he's also like a motivational mentor so my off camp i love spending up in boston with my family you know i can kind of do what i want to do it's still still training every day but it's just a little bit different it's a switch of pace so it's not the same thing every single day and um you know i get to see my family and go you know i really love what you know tyson chardier has done with the team and you know to see calvin you know even though it was a tough outing against Max Holloway, it was tough to see, you know, it, it was a tough fight, but it just showed, you know, the type of fighter Boston fighters are, the guys are not going to quit. So, you know, I think, you know, he represented um, our city well and, and and what we stand for is never giving up, never quitting. And another prime example of that is, is Mickey Ward. And then Calvin showed it in his fight against Max. Absolutely. And uh, last one for me, I know you put a, a little distance between yourself and that neck injury now, but when you look back at it, does it make you appreciate being here even more, knowing, you know, how close you kind of came to perhaps, you know, having to hang up the gloves? Yeah, that's that's been a pretty inspirational part of my career. Like, you know, I I kind of thought coming into the UFC being nine and zero that I was just going to go straight to a world title, and I, that's really what I believe. You know, I came in undefeated into the UFC. It was super, super, just like I just thought that I thought that that was what it was going to be, but. 
when um you know the the story changed so you know when the story changed and then all this is just this is just this is just the way the story is supposed to be and this is the way the story is going to be written is it just you know even more of an inspirational comeback come back from a two-year neck injury um you know the doctors told me i would never fight they told me it was a less than a one percent chance that i would ever fight again and I told the doctor that I'm a one percenter. You know, all these guys that are fighting in the UFC, including Derek Minor and all the guys that I've ever fought, are the one percent of people that make it to this level. So I told them that I was okay with that one percent chance, and I was going to move forward with it and to do the surgery and to get back. And 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 I did it. And then I came back and set the record for most wins in the Boston Guard with a first round finish over Manny Bermudez and the most all times wins in Boston of all time, passing Conor McGregor. So. Um, you know, I'm really happy I didn't give up. And like I said, going back to everything of the way I was raised, even though I live in South Florida, being raised in Boston is, you know, that gave me that mentality, you know, so take a lot of pride in that. Absolutely. Well, wish you all the best of luck this week and thanks very much for your time. Thank you. We'll go next to Gavin Porter with UFC.com. Actually, me, man, but it's, it's still right here. So. Okay. All right, man. So you fought, you know, when you look at this top 15 of the division right now, you fought a lot of the names that got split with the IR. You fought, you know, Brad Fresh Mitchell and these guys. You know you can compete right there in those ranks. What kind of run do you think will get you there? Yeah, that's why I'm excited. I, I, I said in an interview before, this is just the way the story is supposed to be written. I think, you know, it's it's easy just to go with, with no, um, no, no adversity to come from go 9 and 0, start your professional career and I know with all first round finish and go right to a world title, become a world champion. But that's not the way the story is supposed to be written. You know, there's a lot of adverse adversity that I went through going through the neck injuries, you know, you know, tough losses, you know, split decision loss in Mexico City to Rodriguez in Mexico in his hometown. But these are things that built me as a fighter. I wouldn't be as good as I am and have the level of talent I have right now if it wasn't for those losses. I, I got better from each loss than I have from every win, and that's a fact. So I'm the best I've ever been right now, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm ready to make a run at the world title. Yeah, and, and it seems like your, your opponent, when you look at the matchup, yeah, he has some good submissions to such match he, he, he kind of really relies on that. It's a big weapon in his game. When you know a guy has got a specialty in something like that, you're obviously privy to it, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, you know, every every one of these guys you go into the UFC is dangerous and they all have a specialty. You know, one guy's an Olympic wrestler. The next guy you go against was a glory kickboxer. You know, when I fought Sean Soriano, he's Henry Hook, you know, protege, and I had to kickbox with him the whole fight. Like, so every guy that you're going against is special. There's no doubt about it. So obviously, you know, you go through with your coaches. I go through with my coach, Charles McCarthy, Roger Crawl. We go over the game plan and we look at his strengths, my strengths, his weaknesses, and we, we try to expose his weaknesses. So um, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely something I've been practicing, getting ready for, getting ready for his game. But uh, you know, I'm just I work on every day being the best fighter I can be. I've traveled the entire planet, you know, going to Thailand, Holland, Dutch kickboxing in Amsterdam, Majiro Gym, and all over the you know Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's gym in the United States and South Carolina. So I've been able to train with the elite, elite, and I'm just continuing to get better. So I'm I'm excited for this one. Right, so, and last one for me is, you know, when you walk away from that octagon on Saturday with a victory, what, what, what type of performance would you be proud of? What do you want to display on Saturday that you can walk away with your head high as well as your guys? Um, man, I, I mean, I want to be able to pass the merit test, knowing that I went in there and gave 100%. Like, win, lose, or draw, that's always – I know that, like, I can look myself in the mirror when I wake up in the morning and I, I look in saying, hey, I did everything I could possibly do to prepare for this fight. I dieted. I went through all the training sessions. I fought through the injuries, fought through everything throughout the camp. And now, you know, this is the, this is going to be the the, the product of, of uh, and the result of all the hard work that I put in. So, I mean, that's, that's you know, up to the guy upstairs to see how it's going to happen. But I, I'm really excited to, to put on a show and display my skills because, you know, even since the last fight, Got a lot of confidence from that big win over Kevin. He's an elite level guy, tough as nails, and you know had a great fight against him. And just to be able to feel myself in the octagon and just open up my game, and finally felt like a complete like mixed martial artist, and I'm finally fully evolved. Great man, well we can't wait to see you there on Saturday. Awesome man, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Charles. You're also.